Hey everyone, today's lesson is lesson 120 and this is a really exciting math lesson and video to do for you today because it is officially the last lesson in our curriculum for the year. It seems crazy that I'm making this video already. Um, I sure wish I was teaching this to you in person, but we're doing the best we can and I'm hoping that these videos are helpful. This is a huge celebration for you. Sixth grade math is not a cakewalk. It's a lot of hard work and I'm really proud of how you've all grown as mathematicians this year. Let's go ahead and do this video. Um, it's a pretty easy concept, but an important one to touch on and an important skill to know um, because today's topic is on finding the volume of a cylinder. Now, although that sounds like something we've probably touched on before, we've done work with volume, of course. So volume meaning um, a 3D shape where we take base times width times height to find the internal space. Um, and we, we take those three dimensions. And that's why um, when we talk about volume, our label has the exponent of three. We're multiplying three pieces of information together. To find the volume of a cylinder is a little bit tricky because we don't necessarily have three pieces of information. Cylinders, meaning um, the base of that is circular. So um, we're gonna touch back a little bit about pi and um, we'll talk about how to find the volume of things like this. So our learning targets for today, calculate the vol volume of a cylinder by multiplying the area of a circular end of a cylinder by the height of the cylinder. Um, trying to think of some real world examples on um, why you might need to know this. I think I put some examples like this in your homework, but for example, like if I were to have uh, my husband build me a rain barrel, I love rain barrels, such a great way to water your garden and use resources naturally around you. But if I were to have my husband uh, fix up a rain barrel for me and we had like a big plastic drum um, to collect water, that internal space to be able to figure out how much water that could hold, um, we could easily do that by calculating the area of the base and multiplying it by how tall it was. So I could go a couple ways with that. If I told him I need, um, I really want, in order to water my garden regularly with rainwater, I need a drum that holds 50 gallons of water. I don't know. Um, we could do the math to figure out, well, how tall does that you know, barrel of water or drum need to be? in order for it to hold 50 gallons. So let's go ahead and go, go on to our example here. Um, the example that they give is the idea that if you were to take a, a brick of clay or Play-Doh or something, and you were to take a quarter and push it all the way down, you'd end up with this hollow space that was shaped like a cylinder and you could find the volume of that space. Here we go. The diameter of this cylinder is 20 centimeters. The height is 10 centimeters. What is the volume? So we're gonna break this down a little bit further. If you wanna just take this information right here, pause the video, try to solve this on your own, and then check your work with mine in just a moment. So our very first step is just to look at the circular base of this um, cylinder. And we're looking at a couple of pieces of information. They told us this right here, 20 centimeters. So the diameter of the base is 20 centimeters. No, we have to use a little prior knowledge that, um, let's talk really quick about area of a circle. The formula for area of a circle, this is probably worth me writing down. Just, I like visuals, you know. Um, here's my stylus pen. The area for a circle is come on, pi r squared. Okay, pi r squared. That's the area for a circle. I like having that visual, even though they kind of explain that here. So they didn't automatically give us r. They told us that it was 20 centimeters across. Well, if we know that the diameter is 20, we know just based on what we know about circles, the radius is always half of the diameter. The diameter, meaning that line that cuts completely across the circle, the radius is half of that. Um, so any line that jets off from the, the, ver the center of a circle is a radius. So half of 20, of course, is 10. And that's where we get this from right here. That's that 10. So we're gonna use that 10 in our formula here. The area of this circle is pi r squared. So let's just talk through this a little bit. R squared in this case, our R is 10. 
10 squared would be 10 times 10. So 10 times 10 is 100. I really should just write this up. I'm avoiding writing because doing it with the stylus is just kind of the worst. So um, instead of doing the pi symbol, I'm actually going to write 3.14. Um, times r squared. And we just said 10 times 10 is 100. 3.14 times 100. There really should be a visible point there. 3.14 times 100. Well, we can do easy math here based on the rule of 10. We can um, just bump the decimal to the right two times. We're moving to the right because we're multiplying two times because there are two zeros in 100. So now instead of 3.14, we have 314. The area of the base of this circle is 314 centimeters squared. But we're not done there because we're not just finding the area, we're finding the volume. We have one more dimension to multiply it by. And so I'm just going to scroll up just for visual people like me, just so you can see the height of this cylinder is 10. Also, not to get confused with our radius of 10, the height of this is 10. So now we still need to multiply that variable in. We have 314 times 10 more centimeters because it's 10 centimeters tall. And again, because we're multiplying by a power of 10, we don't have to do any multiplying at all. We can just move our decimal to the right one more time, fill that space in with a zero, and we get a final answer of 3,140 centimeters cubed. That label of cubed is very important. Um, in your homework, you're not going to be able to type an exponent of three. You'll need to type out the word cubed. Um, hopefully this video was helpful. Um, Rewatch any parts that you, you need to, but um, thanks for watching. Have a great day.